Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad here this Friday morning. We have made it through this week. It's been it's been a rough week for everybody here in the Panhandle as far as weather, but it looks like things are looking a little bit brighter, get some sunshine and all, but we're going to uh, have a have a good good weekend, it looks like. Our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin and Highway 77. It's going to get a high of only 62 and low of 43, so it's really cool. But this is the last weekend of February. It's going to wrap it up tomorrow. And, and of course, Sunday is March the 1st, and I, I was looking on the calendar, folks. We had, In nine days, uh, uh, actually, uh, yeah, nine days uh, on March day, we're going to have uh, – Daylight saving times coming in. March the 8th, we've got daylight saving times coming in. So uh, not this Sunday, but following Sunday. And also, it's like 21 days. On March the 20th uh, is the first day of spring. So we only, that's right around the corner. Hard to believe that. What kind of week we've had here. But this has been typical. You look back on February, it's been typical February weather. Okay? Like I say, low is going to be 43. Water temperature, believe it or not, it dropped one degree. So uh, it's at down to 57. But again, I want to say, uh, this time last year, it was floating around with 52 and 53 degrees, so it's right between those. So it's, it's still warmer this year than it was last year. River readings, uh, as you can expect now, they're, they're sky, I mean, they're really high, okay? Their uh, applied cold is at 12.5. It should start dropping out uh, right now, really. It should be a slow drop. But that's from Bluntstown, a slow drop. So it's going to be, if you're fishing around Howard Creek or, or the Brickyard and all, we're going to have some high water. Uh, let's go to Choctahatchee, and it's just going to constantly... Uh, keep rising up. Uh, it's, it's really not that high right now. Well, it's around 7, but uh, 7.9 right now. But it's going to get up there around 10 by Saturday night, Sunday morning. So it, it's on the rise there. Our tie chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn and Funeral Home and Cemetery. You take a look at it. It's, uh, it's in good shape. We've got some good tides today. We're going to have a low tide at 2.52 a.m. and a high tide at 4.31 this afternoon. So you got a, you got a tide coming in. Uh, until uh, late this afternoon, 4.31, so it'll be, be a good day to do that. Let's take a uh, our marine forecast. It's going to be north-northeast uh, about 5, so not, not, a big, not a big wind today. So that, that's going to be good. So it should be some good bay fishing. Uh, don't get around any kind of freshwater outlet because it's going to be a lot of freshwater pushed into the bay system. So really, if you're going to bay fish, you want to be out toward the, uh, the gulf somewhere toward it, on that end of the bay system, so no matter what system you're on. I just like to look at a fishing game time for today. Brought to us by Mark Cowart of Edgewater Beach Realty. Mark's number is 836000, and he can set you up. Uh, we'll give him a call. Our times today, 716 to 916 this morning, and of course this evening, 741 to 941. If you want to get into that uh, February floundering again, you better, it's not going to be a good time to do it. Uh, I, I'm still fascinated by the picture we got of some flounder that's been gigged here in February. Not a lot of them, just just a few of them, but it just you know shows it can be done. And what happened, a lot of people just flat out don't go because of the weather. Okay, uh, that takes care of our weather. Let's go ahead and take our break. We'll be right back. Hi, right, welcome back. First thing I want to do is add some names to the pickle jar. Okay, here's Slim Tiller from Deer Point Lake. Slim, you going in there. Adam Tiller, Deer Point Lake, and Bobby Tiller, Derby Woods. So don't forget to enter any time of the year. We still got 10 months left this year. I'll tell you what we're planning on doing. We talked about in November, we're sometime in November, we're going to be having our 2,000th show. And I'm going to, we're going to have a big giveaway to celebrate that, a big, uh, big party and all. We're going to give away a lot of stuff. In fact, my goal is if I can collect enough stuff between now and then and give away $2,000 worth of stuff. To, so that's my tentative goal. I've already started collecting. In fact, I've already got a pair of binoculars to give away. So uh, we're going to have a big week that week. Okay, we've got some, uh, we have some hunter safety courses coming up. I just got this in, in about six different counties here in the Panhandle, right here in our viewing area. So I'm going to just give you the dates on it, and uh, I'm just going to read them off my iPad here. I, by the way, I've noticed some of these other Big TV stations, some of their news anchors are starting to, they've been watching my show, I know, because they're starting to use these uh, iPads. So, yeah, if you think they're copying me, uh, we set the trend for them. Calhoun County, uh, Hunter Safety is going to be March the 7th. They'll be there at the Sheriff's Office March the 7th. Now, that's not this Saturday, but that's next Saturday. Gulf County, right down the road, Gulf County, you're going to be doing it in, uh, in Weewall on February, February 28th. That's tomorrow. 
<laughs> That's not a lot of notice. So you got to jump on the computer this afternoon, do the computer work, and then go to the range tomorrow at the Gulf County Correctional Institute. Jackson County, if you want one up there, Chipola College Firing Range. It's going to be March the 7th. That's next Saturday. Walcola County, that's going to be uh, from, uh, that's going to be over by the Walcola County Sheriff's Office. From, that's next Saturday, March the 7th. Walton County, all you folks, good folks over there. A lot of good viewers in the Funac Springs. It's going to be uh, March the 8th. March the 8th. Uh, that's the interesting there, to 2 p.m. And then Washington County up at Hard Labor Creek will uh, be March the 7th. So that's a lot of the counties in our viewing area that's going to be having Hunter Safety Corps. So, so be, be aware of that. And, uh, and if you need it, go ahead and, and go. Remember, the child's got to be accompanied by an adult, all right? In fact, uh, uh, Wendy and uh, Wendy just took Mason to get his, so they just finished up on theirs. All right, let's go. Just a few pictures here. Let's take a look at some of these pictures here. This, is, this one's cool. Uh, I, I think if you want a fishing truck, that would be the ticket to have right there. That's a good-looking fishing truck. Uh, get it wrapped up. I, just, I saw that. I thought y'all would like that one, all right? This was a snake we had yesterday on the video, this eastern indigo. I just wanted to show y'all a still picture of it as it's going into the gopher hole for protection. All right. This, uh, this is a special one to me. His mom worked with me, and we coached his dad there in football. This is a five-year-old Tanner Page. That's his first buck. Now, uh, black powder. Got it uh, the other day. Hey, he, I, I'm talking about five years old. That's Christy. His dad's Travis Page. Granddad Mark Page, y'all know the Page family. They've been around here a long time. Uh, Christy uh, teaches there with me at Mosley. And uh, look at that big old smile on face. His dad's been, been out of town doing construction work for quite some time. He just got back into town, had enough time to, to take Tanner hunting. And uh, they, they had a good job there. Tanner, five years old. All right, I just want to show you a couple of pictures because we're going to talk, start talking about surf fishing. And I've got a little video coming up. But uh, a lot of times we have trouble identifying our fish and all, of course, this is what we call a little sand trout, if you're fishing in the surf, okay, a little sand trout. I have a short snout, got a big eye. Uh, this one right here, of course, is our uh, speckle trout, okay, it's a weak fish or spotted sea trout. It's called several things, but in the Gulf now, they're going to be a lighter color than they are in the, in the uh, bay. And, but what gets a lot of people confused now, this is a whiting that I'm often, I often talk about the whiting, okay, and uh, it has uh, some diagonal bands on it, and, uh, and that's just good. All three of those are really good fishing right there, really good eating and good fishing. All right, one or two more pictures, outdoor wildlife photography. Our own uh, Pam Kelly takes a lot of pictures. This is a bufflehead, a male bufflehead on the left and a female on the right. Good, uh, real pretty birds. This is taken in a retention pond. Uh, here locally, uh, uh, there uh, we showed some pictures of redheads yesterday, but here's some buffalo heads. Okay, and let's see. Today, we want to be thankful and remember how rich you are. Your family is priceless. Your time is gold, and your health is wealth. So that's things you don't have to have a lot of money to be rich. Okay, so that takes care of that. I want to uh, also mention now this is going, this weekend wrapping up our. Our uh, muzzleloader season is wrapping up uh, quail season. In fact, I'm leaving uh, just as soon as I get out of school today. Uh, I may try to leave a few minutes early if, if those, uh, I'll get some help on it. And we're going to uh, go to my annual quail hunt up there in Gaston County with my old high school buddies. And we're looking forward to that. We'll have a big steak supper tonight and get around and tell the same stories we told 40 years ago. We're going to tell them again, uh, same stories. And they'll be, uh, we all know them, but we have them memorized. We'll tell them again. Then we'll get up in the morning, have a big breakfast. And go out and uh, and hunt some quail. Some of my buddies they're they're going to go play golf tomorrow afternoon, and uh, then we're going to have, we'll have big lunch tomorrow. So I'm just really looking forward to this weekend. Y'all know I've done it before, and uh, how much I enjoy the quail hunt, but more importantly the fellowship of just old buddies I grew up with. So the uh, quail season, uh, is, is, like I say, wrapping it up this weekend. Then uh, of course we got youth turkey hunt coming up. We'll talk all about that later. Let's take this break now. We'll be right back. <laughs> Right, welcome back. We're getting up to the next segment now for our famous Friday fishing forecast. But let's go and do our drawing here from Tarpon Dock Seafood. We're going to draw out two names. And, of course, the first name will be that $20 gift certificate. And you saw the compliments. Uh, I get so many nice emails about the good, good food down there and great service. You saw the one we talked about yesterday. All right, the winner is going to be right here. The winner is going to be Steve Saps. I don't have words from Steve Saps. Okay, you want $20. This is the last weekend of February. All right, and then the big red snapper 
we're going to get, that's going to be Fred Casal, Lynn Haven, Fred and Steve. So I'm going to put them in order here. I'll write it down when, I, when we go to it. Okay. Now we're going to get ready to do, a, I've got a, a short video. This is a video, uh, like I say, surf fishing is right around the corner. And I've done a two-part video, and I've showed this a, a while back, but it's, it's, it's good to show it again on how to get ready for surf fishing. And like I said, I'll show this first part now, just getting ready at the house or close by, and then the second part later on, what you do when you get to the beach about setting up. And, and a lot of people are surf fishing. Uh, more and more people are wade fishing, more and more people are surf fishing, and it's not that complicated. You just want to have some good terminal tackle, and, and we'll, we'll talk about it here in the video and all, but I just want you to, to be aware that it, it, it's not that hard to do, and it's a lot of fun, and sometimes it's steady action, and sometimes it's not. It sounds like fishing, doesn't it? But uh, we're right around the corner from it, so you can go ahead and start getting prepared. Uh, you don't need a lot of rod and reels, just one or two. Uh, there's more surf fishing now on Panama City Beach than there ever has been, especially down on the west end. Uh, they, they've always done a lot of it over there on thir in the, what's called the 38 corridor, but they sort of getting squeezed out with, with so many tourists and all over there. But this has always been some really good surf fishing. In fact, the very first, some of the best surf fishing that I've ever done has been over there. And I, I probably couldn't even go by the same spots now, but around Emerald, Emerald Crest and that area, some really good surf fishing. So uh, give it a try. Walton County, uh, all the way down to St. George Island here in Panhandle, just really good stuff. Dog Island also. Let's go ahead and roll this video on how to get ready for surf fishing, okay? Hi, right, folks. We're going surf fishing. Now, I, I've been surf fishing for a long time. In fact, I hate to think about how long I've been around, about 40 years, I guess, fishing around the beach and all. I love doing it, and over the years I've learned a lot. I just want to share some things with you. Now, I might not get everything in today, but we're going to first of all start with just sort of getting set up. This is back in your, in your garage or, or my little fishing house here. And I'm going to show you how we're going to get all the stuff together before we take everything to the beach. Some of the basic things you need. Of course, the first thing I always think of is, is my five-gallon bucket. You know, uh, I've got to have a couple of buckets now, some five-gallon, some four-gallon. And one of, the, one of the best things I found a long time ago, this is like a little bucket board. And this will fit on a five gallon bucket, okay? See how the curves in right there? Gotta fit down just like that. Got a little place to put the knife in. Always have a little knife with me. Keep it on there for cutting my bait and different things. Uh, sometimes I want to cut a piece of the fish off and all. That's one of the first things you want to have, the five gallon bucket. Now the next thing, you're going to have some rod holders. Now down here are some rod holders. I'm going to show you a commercial kind and then some you can make yourself. I made these myself, they're not very complicated to get PVC same size, about two inch there, and you drive them in the ground. This is a commercial grade, and what I like about a commercial, it has a uh, little rod through here that the uh, rod will set a little a rod to hold the rod to keep it from going down. It has a nice sharp point. Now, keep in mind, you're going to always, always take a rubber mallet, and that's simply with just driving these in the ground, okay? And one, one of the things I do also, when I drive it in the ground, I always have, you know, I always got some towels and all. I always put this on the cover of it to cover it up so when I feed it like that, it won't, over the years, it won't break it. That'll last a lot longer. So that's a good little tip right there. So you got a couple of buckets, okay? Got your mallet, got your bucket board and all. So now let's talk a little bit about the tackle. What I've used, I don't take a big tackle box. <laughs> I hate to say how old this is. I've used this a long time, folks. And this is basically my little surf tackle box. Like I say, I have the knife right here. And you see what I use it for. Okay, now on my lead, I start with a little one ounce triangle down here, one ounce, two ounce, and three ounce. Okay, I do that for a reason, and I'll show you that in a minute. I, also, I always have some pompano jigs, different hooks in here, and some artificial sand fleas. And, uh, and this weight here we've talked about before, this is Sputnik weight, and I think I've showed you basically how it, how it works. It will dig in the sand. I use this sometimes, it will actually dig in the sand, and when you jerk it, it will pop off like that. So that's just different lead, and you've got to use your lead according to the surf action and different things to set up with it, with the surf. Now, also have some kind of, some kind of tool, some kind of floatable device or something. I always like these right here, and keep these in my pocket. Now, on the one thing on, on the rod and reels, I've always used three, a three set uh, setup, and when we get down to the beach, now I'm going to show you how to set them up. I've always used, I have a 14 foot long rod, and I try to get it way out past the second sandbar. Okay, on, on the left footer here, this is an old Garcia Mitchell I've had for a long time. It's an old reel, but it's always been a good one. I use it. On this one, I use it like an eight-pound test line, 
and uh, try to get it up. I'm going to show you the hook rig and all in a minute, but just, that's my medium rod. I have a 14 footer, 11 footer, and then I have a one piece uh, 8 footer. I like here, uh, you know, this is a little dive reel with six pound test line and all, but this is a good setup also. So I use three reels, okay? One long one, one medium, and one short one, and we'll talk more about that later. Now, getting down to the tackle, setting up the tackle. I like a two hook rig. Now, right here, I'm going to show you a three hook rig, okay? Just hang it up right here. I don't know if we get all of it in. Of course, you have a triangle right at the bottom. And one of the new things now that was advantageous about this, these little yellow floats, you know, on a sand flea, this is the color of the eggs and all sometimes, orange is yellowish. And this is a good setup here, but it's, it's uh, one, two, actually three hooks on it. That's not a bad setup, but a lot of times it's hard to get three fish at one time, though. But the idea of the floats is to get the uh, sand flea sort of up there floating, okay? Now, I personally like a, a two hook rig. Now, I do fish with some three hook rigs, but I personally like a two hook rig. And the reason, uh, if you check down this one right here, you have a good triangle weight on the end of it. You got two hooks, and don't, they don't get in the way because sometimes a three hook will tangle up. Now, this was a, with a little bead on it. This is one made without the bead, and I fish both of them, okay? You see different size hooks. Uh, nice, nice circle hooks, and uh, what, what you want to do on your terminal tackle, like I say, I make some of these myself. I'm going to show you later on how to make these. But this is a basic setup right here on a two hook rig. And it should be laying on the sand like that, and hopefully, the sand, don't worry about the sand flea digging into the uh, sand because they're going to have a hook in them. They can't really dig in there. They might put a part of the head in there, but uh, they won't really dig in there. Now, so this is basically all you need. That's, that's one thing I love about it. It's so simple to go surf fishing. Uh, one thing, uh, a couple other things now, of course, you want to have good sunglasses, uh, good, good uh, uh, suntan lotion all to protect yourself. And also, over here, I found a chair several years back at one of the local grocery stores. And what's so great about this is it has a shade on it. Now, these are, have been hard to find. This one's about worn out. I've been looking for another one. So, if y'all see any more of these at a grocery store, y'all give me a call. I want to buy me a couple more. This has lasted about five years. That shade is so important on the beach and all. So this is the first phase now of, of setting up for surf fishing. We're going to, next part, we're going to get all the stuff together. And I'm going to show you a cart and everything. We're going down to the beach and actually set up down there and show you the different places of fish. So for Panhandle Outdoors, how to surf fish with Winston Chester. Thank you. Hi, welcome to the famous Friday Fishing Report brought to us by Tropic Dock Seafood and we're just tickled to bring it to you because it's been a, been a rough week. We're going to start off over in Choctahatchee Bay over there. Uh, I'm just going to read it to you. I'm not going to show you anything on the map. I've got this one from a local tackle shop. Offshore now, they're catching some nice amberjack going out of Destin. Uh, sheephead in the bay now. The sheephead, the redfish, and yes, some squid. They're catching squid over there. Uh, and, this, and the drum. They're catching, all those, are, it's been a good week before all this bad weather. So, but they the last, this is like a two week report from that local tackle shop. So, now let's go from one end to all the way to the other end. Let's go down to Carabell. I just got off the phone right before we came on air with Kim. She's running Sea Quarters Marina uh, during the day. I and mean, when Miller's coming in a little bit after lunch, so I didn't get to talk to Miller. But uh, Kim said it's been a good week. He said, she said there were some folks there in the boats there that are catching, just fishing off the dock like a lot of us would do, and they're having really good luck on speckled trout. That's at the mouth of the river. In fact, I can show you, uh, Sea Quarters Marina would be, Sea Quarters Marina would be right in here. But she said, uh, what what's fun? I'm going to zoom in a little bit. She said they're catching sheephead. I'm going to show you exactly where they're catching. She said off the pavilion. Okay, so I'm going to put it here in the middle of the pavilion. Okay, well, it just flipped up on me, so we had good intentions. There's a pavilion they're catching uh, sheephead from, okay, it's right here. Okay, I, I didn't show it real good, right here in the middle, okay. The local pavilion is open to the public. You just walk out on it right in here. You can fish off of it, and uh, they're catching sheephead. They're real, uh, just simple like we do, we just we peel shrimp, okay. Let's go up here to Mexico Beach. I have I got a good report from Mitch Coleman of Florida Days Adventures. You're on a good trip, uh, go with Mitch on Florida Days Adventures. The water is the same temperature over there, 58 degrees. Uh, plenty of small bait just off the beaches. And I noticed that the other day, some bait a lot off the beaches. Plenty of whiting in the canal. That's all I just showed you a picture earlier of a whiting uh, and the jet edge and catch them on cut bait. Um, a fresh shrimp. A few black drum is off the pier around the pilings. And of course, it's been too rough for me to get, get out in the Gulf, and we understand that. And we talked to Blair uh, earlier, uh, Captain Blair, yesterday morning, and he was talking about canal 
was really hot with sheephead uh, catching on Carolina rig on, on a shrimp there. So uh, it, that, that's some really good fishing. Let's run up here to Panama City. I want to say really good fishing. I'm putting in a comparison to the kind of weather we have. If you you got to find a place to get out of the weather, like we said yesterday, the canal is a good place to get out of out of weather. That fishing off the uh, off that pavilion in Carabelle on, on the river there, that's out of the weather. So keep that in mind when you, when you're doing things. Intercoastal waterway, some really good stuff, and and just fishing offshore uh, is it, just out of the question now. Uh, let's come in here to Panama City. I got some reports from Panama City. Uh, the the red the best report has been the redfish. Uh, Ken Paramore talked about this yesterday. Some redfish or two days ago, redfish up there at Deer Point Dam. A big school of small rat, what we call rat reds. Uh, a lot of people having fun catching them. You can catch them on a uh, little artificial. I mean, not artificial, but they're catching them on little peel shrimp or uh, just fishing from the dam there. So that school that school moves around all over the bay, and uh, they just happen to be. Now, I don't think this weekend. I'm afraid this fresh water is going to just, you know, that water is going to be churning out of there. It's going to push them out. So if you're going to do some uh, best fishing, is going to be, I would go fish off the, uh, if we got that north wind, be some good fishing off the State Park Pier or any of the piers. The piers, pier fishing should be some of the best fishing this this weekend uh, along the along the Gulf. We've got these three piers here. Also, if you're going to fish the bay, get closer to the mouth of the Gulf because we're going to have a lot of fresh water runoff, not just from Deer Point Dam and the Choctaw River, but all the little creeks and uh, all the parking lots and everything uh, they put a lot of fresh water runoff in it. So keep that in mind too. Uh, like I say, the, the black drum has been one of the, around the pilings, has been one of the best uh, best targets all, all winter. It's been a really good year on that. Okay, uh, we've got uh, just a few minutes, just a few seconds left. Uh, bridge fishing, if you want to get out and kayak, you can do some good bridge fishing. It should be good. Uh, the bridges are far enough away from fresh water. Uh, moving on along, uh, surf fishing over there in uh, in Walton County will be good. Okay, uh, we're gonna have to wrap it up. You make sure you have a great weekend. Go and make some plans now and do something outdoors, anything from picnicking to, to fishing or just riding in the woods if you can. But it's gonna be wet still. The ground will be wet. So you have a great weekend. You do something good for someone today. I appreciate you watching Panhandle Outdoors and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.